Meta has unveiled a second version of their Llama large language model, and even better, managed not to leak it this time. I'm Riley Murdoch, this is TechLinked, and according to Meta, Llama 2 Electric Boogaloo, not the real name, is pre-trained on two trillion tokens, with fine-tuned models for chat apps being further trained on over one million human annotations, probably left over from when they programmed Mark Zuckerberg. He seems more human recently, he does jujitsu. Yeah, they've improved his, uh, they've improved his model. <laughs> Meta claims Llama 2 is open source, but the open source initiative is calling BS because Mita, Mita, I was Australian for a second there, yeah. Mita doesn't allow Llama 2 licensees with over 700 million active daily users and doesn't want people using Llama 2's outputs to improve other LLMs. But even with those restrictions, most researchers and commercial users should be able to use it. And Meta has announced a partnership with Qualcomm to get Llama 2 running locally on their processors next year. Finally realizing humanity's collective dream of being able to tell your phone, computer, show me Elon's latest dank meme. But just like the force, there's a dark side to LLMs being open source. A black hat hacker recently used an open model called GPTJ to release Worm GPT, which is like ChatGPT, but without ethics and with an unhealthy enthusiasm for creating malware. Is there a healthy enthusiasm for creating malware? You know, I was just gonna say, everything in moderation. A cybersecurity expert at NordVPN called it ChatGPT's evil twin, and as if we didn't have enough AI stuff to worry about, now I have an image of a chatbot with a goatee in my head. It's very unsettling. Intel announced earlier this week that its NUC mini PC brand was dead, but it turns out it was only mostly dead, and Asus had the chocolate-covered miracle pill to bring it back to life. Wow. A Princess Bride reference is already my favorite episode. Asus will get a non-exclusive license to Intel's next unit of computing, or NUC, product designs. This will allow Asus to manufacture 10th gen to 13th gen NUC systems, and maybe even develop later designs based on Team Blue's future processors. Asus will even establish a new business unit for the NUC called Asus NUC BU, which of course is an anagram for see you, you ass bun, and see you as un bus, which is Franglish for I see you as a bus. I'm sorry for the last 10 seconds. I wish I could take them back. This new business unit will take over customer support and handle the designs, indicating that Asus has big plans for the NUC brand. Finally, Intel can be free to focus on its core passions, making great consumer chips and eventually getting around to launching graphics cards after years of edging. The US government is preparing a new cyber trust mark for smart devices that meet elevated cybersecurity standards. So buyers can know on site which baby monitor will quickly patch vulnerabilities and which will email your child's social security number to Russian cyber criminals the moment you turn your back. Straight live stream to Vladimir Putin. <laughs> he wants to know. The label might be available as soon as next year, and like, say, the Energy Star certification for energy efficiency, this one will likely require products to undergo annual recertification to make sure they're up to date with current best practices, such as, in this case, well-implemented intrusion detection and not having a universal password for every single smart garage door opener you've ever sold. And yes, I'm talking about you, next with two X's. Why do you have two X's? According to cybersecurity experts, smart appliances like plugs, routers, cameras, and especially TVs are the most vulnerable devices in a typical home, raising the question of whether my doctor is right and I just need to get more sleep, or Elmo really is spying on me. <laughs> The cyber trust mark is intended to raise security standards and give users peace of mind, knowing that the next toaster they buy is definitely not a sleeper agent for North Korea. Now it's time for Quick Bits, brought to you by Vistaprint, where you can unleash your creative side and print some wicked personalized products, man. <laughs> it's as simple as uploading your design, selecting your product, and checking out. You can even create your own designs with their online, easy to use tools. And don't worry if your artistic skills need a bit of work, because their design experts will help you channel your inner Bob Ross, painting happy little clouds in no time. From promotional materials to personalized gifts, Vistaprint does it all. Check them out at the link below and print yourself some cool swag, bro. Some might say that we don't need so many quick bits, but I just think they're quick bitter. 
Norway has issued a three month ban against Meta starting August 4th that bars Facebook and Instagram from any and all behavioral advertising based on data collection and profiling of Norwegian users. I guess Norway hasn't heard about threads yet. Threads is free to, Threads oh, is not it's, in it's not in Europe, oh, uh oh. <laughs> While Meta is free to continue operating in Norway, the company will be fined $100,000 for every day they fail to comply with the order, which could total over $9 million over the course of the three month ban. Now, that might sound like a lot, but considering Meta made a gross profit of $92 billion last year, it's a bit like threatening to remove hundreds of spoonfuls of water from the ocean. Don't make me mad. Don't test me. <laughs> Reddit decided to delete all users' chat history older than January 1st of this year, costing one user his first messages with his now wife. Reddit was what they did together. Continuing their string of just outstanding PR moves, Reddit also made the iOS app icon uglier and are charging users to change it back. Also, they're bringing back r slash place, the pixelated canvas all Redditors can contribute to. Well, that was kind of cool. I, for one, can't wait to see all the varied illustrations of CEO Steve Huffman surrounded by phallic objects. It's probably, it's probably gonna happen. Several clips showing footage of Amazon's delivery driver-facing cameras have been posted to Reddit, prompting concerns about worker privacy. The driver cams use AI to track the driver, the speed of the vehicle, and even its location data. Amazon drivers must give signed consent for their biometric data to be collected by the cameras. Presumably, drivers must also sign the waiver in blood and have it witnessed by at least one demon. Have you met my man manager, Beelzebub? <laughs> Google is disabling internet access for more than 2,500 employees in a pilot program aimed at reducing the risk of cyber attacks. The workers will still have access to Google-owned websites and Google's own internal network, if only because having thousands of employees forced to communicate written missives via Telegram and Carrier Pigeon would be less convenient. Employees will apparently be allowed to opt in or out of the pilot, which I feel is poor experimental design. Google should select a random sample of their workforce who get to wonder for the next few months why the only websites that are loading on their workstation are Google Drive, Waze, and YouTube. Are they being hacked? Are they about to be fired? Is this a prank? <laughs> And millions of US military emails have been leaked, and the culprit, surprisingly, is the letter I. It's like a dark Sesame Street episode. See, the US military uses the domain extension .mil, which is only a single letter away from the country domain used by Russian ally Mali. Since 2013, a Dutch contractor managing the Mali domain has been repeatedly contacting US officials concerning millions of misdirected messages. Mostly boring, routine emails, but with just a sprinkling of sensitive military intelligence, including maps, naval inspection reports, terrorism briefings, and passwords. You're emailing passwords? Come on. We've got bigger problems here than Molly's. Yeah, <laughs> this is not Molly's fault. While the military claims to block internal emails accidentally sent to a Malian address, the same contractor received an army general's itinerary for a diplomatic trip to Indonesia as recently as this past May. Or if you prefer, his assassination coordinates. <laughs> Don't worry, it'll all be fine, so long as no one with top secret clearance misses a single key and accidentally emails Molly the nuclear codes. And we won't go nuclear if you don't come back on Friday for more tech news, but we will be a tad miffed. You, peeved. You don't wanna see that.